Next, we have Caitlin. Hi. So the project that I'm going to be presenting on today is PRISM, which is a personalized, restorative, interactive smart mirror that uses AI chatbot technology integrated into a smart mirror to make a more personalized user experience for healthcare. And the use case that we're um, focusing on for, the, for this specific project is um, stress levels in graduate students and studying biomarkers and um, ways to reduce the stress using the smart mirror. And in the bottom right corner is just an example of what the smart mirror may look like after, um, in development. So chronic stress has um, hormonal and chemical changes to the body. And these can't be gauged by the smart mirror, but the smart mirror can gauge different factors based on um, like a conversation with the user by collecting keywords. And they can figure out, oh, you're really tense or you have um, chronic fatigue, your sleep levels are fluctuating a lot or your appetite. And so the chatbot will collect these biomarkers um, through a conversation with the user. And this could be a voice chat or um, a manual text chat and um, gauge the levels of stress of the user and give suggestions on how to reduce the stress. And another um, option that we're looking at is like using a sleep sensor, maybe a Fitbit to um, look at the levels of sleep throughout the week or um, the time the person is using the smart mirror. And there are a lot of smart mirrors that already exist um, on the market. And the, a lot of pros to those are they're really easy to install. They're already built. Um, they, are, they compare them with an Alexa or a phone and they act. Okay. so. Pros, easy to install, you can connect with your Alexa or phone, and you can use it as like a monitor, so a touch screen, and you can see the, your news whenever you wake up in the morning. But a major con to the smart mirrors on the market is they're super expensive. Um, $1,000 to $2,000 is like the minimum range, and they can go up to $5,000. And as I mentioned, it acts as a monitor, but it can't be adaptive or personalized. It's just um, what the user is wanting to do and input and then output on the mirror. And comparing that to what the mirror that we're hoping to build, um, we're projecting that's going to be about $100 to $400 in cost, which is a lot cheaper than $1 to $2,000. And um, it'll have this chatbot voice um, chat interactive part that um, allows the mirror to be more adaptive to the user and um, to know how to help the user more. And also, um, they can gauge the, the user's levels of stress and stuff like this. And the use case that I mentioned earlier was for um, gauging stress levels in graduate students. However, there are other examples that this could be used for. Um, for example, jobs that have high stress have also have a high correlation of like losing sleep. You guys may have experienced it. Um, and um, medical students, if anyone's medical students or even a PhD student, there's a high um, association with um, high stress levels and high levels of um, like mental health condition symptoms. So by using the smart mirror um, on a daily basis and learning how to reduce their stress levels, this could also potentially help with the sleep and um, mental health issues that are presented. And I've mentioned a few of these, uh, the future benefits of the smart mirror, but one of the main ones that we're looking at is a reduced user dropout rate because there are apps that already exist where like you talk to the, uh, a phone chat daily or something like that. And it's supposed to help with your mental health checkups, but honestly, like they get buried within your phone and sometimes you don't use them. At least that's my personal experience. So, but um, with the smart mirror, it's in your bathroom, it's easy, accessible. You're seeing it at least one to two times a day, maybe six to seven times a day maximum. And you're interacting with it and giving it <laughs> some data to use. Um, additionally, after we look into developing development of like the stress chatbot, it can be furthered into helping um, teach children with autism um, a small daily lesson in the mirror or just mental health care, as I mentioned earlier. And looking into the development of the project, we are in the design phases right now, which is where we're trying to finalize the information that we want to use and the structure of the project. And then we're going to go into collecting the biomarker data. Um, well, figuring out what specifically we want to look at. We're using stress and sleep questionnaires to figure out the keywords that would indicate um, high levels of stress or like a lack of sleep. And um, also potentially a Fitbit if we can. Um, and then it comes to developing the, the chat bot part of that part of the smart mirror that makes it interactive and unique. And we plan to use Dialogflow and Firebase as like the main um, sources for that. And then when it comes to building the mirror and, and um, integrating the chatbot into the smart mirror, we'll be using a Raspberry Pi. And 
Um, I mentioned the sleep questionnaires, like the stress questionnaires. Some of the, in the research that we've been doing, some of the questions that we found are like, how often do you feel angry? Or um, like, how much did you eat well in the last week? And these type of things, they can indicate underlying problems that are related to stress. Um, so by looking at these and by collecting that data from the user, then the chatbot would be able to make um, more um, better suggestions for how to help the user. And some other stress-related keywords are headache, um, tension, grades, workload, things that would typically stress out a person based on other studies that we found. And this is an example of what we hope to do with the uh, user interface of the mirror. Obviously, in the middle, you're going to be seeing yourself. Um, and then on the left-hand side, you see an example of what a conversation may look like with the chatbot. So the person, the user is asking, hey, how's the weather doing today? And a normal chatbot would just say, oh, it's, it's 70 degrees. It's nice out today. Go outside. But then the prism is saying, the weather is nice today, but you have a history of asthma and the humidity is really high and the pollen levels are really high. So don't forget your inhaler when you go outside. Um, and that could be really helpful to the user and um, potentially prevent them from having an asthma attack without their inhaler. And then on the right side, it's um, based on assumably a conversation that happened previously where the user told the mirror or indicated to the mirror that they were very stressed. So Prism is suggesting, hey, you're, you're here right now. Check out this five minute meditation video just to relax and let your stress, down, stress levels down a little bit to um, help you perform throughout the rest of your day. And um, I mentioned that we're using Dialogflow, ES, and Firebase because they let us use um, the voice chat abilities, store data, um, understand conversations, actual language understanding. And um, on the left-hand side, I just have a few more examples of uh, what, the, what the interactions could look like. And I'm not going to go through both of them. But on this first one here, it's just saying that the person didn't get that much sleep um, in that night. And then the, the mirror is saying, oh, because you didn't get that much sleep, you might need an energy boost. So I suggest eating foods that are rich in this vitamin, vitamin B12, to boost your energy throughout the day and um, so that you can perform better throughout your day. And this is also a suggestion. That way it's not a medical like saying you should do this. It's um, just saying this might help you um, perform. And finally, just the building of the mirror. Here's a list of the tools that we plan to need and an example in the right corner about um, how this mirror can be used. And that's all I have.